Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to a catch up in a circle, really, uh, due to the fact that I was flying somewhere over Asia. Anyway, I was flying over over somewhere, and so wasn't able to provide you with a um, an inner circle last Wednesday. So, what I thought I would do is a three part series. So, if you're here already, congratulations! You've hit session one of three. So, the way the sessions are going to run is. First session really is revisiting some of the more common trail stop approaches and lay down a challenge for those of you who perhaps are a little less experienced uh, or those who haven't bothered to put some trail stops in or maybe offer you a couple of tips for those trail stops that you're using already to tighten them up a bit. The second session, which is on Wednesday, is going to be on variable stop losses and I'll explain what they are as we go. There's a slide on those just to frame it uh, and then a really important session, particularly for the you guys who are doing EAs, but generally speaking anyway, is I'm going to take it to the next level with the variable stops. So we're going to look at top 5% trail stops. Um, I don't know what to call it yet, but um, something, I'll come up with something snappy in the meantime. But my hope is at the end of these three sessions, you should be in a position whereby you're uh, not only a trail stop aficionado, but you also feel confident in terms of what sort of things to look at, what sort of things to measure, what sort of things to try out in your own trading, be that discretionary, or if you're developing uh, automated trading models. So that's it all put into a little nutshell thing to kick things off. Um, thank you to all of you who have made along today. I feel free, as always, to ask questions, make comments along the way. It'd be uh, wonderful to hear from you, as always. So what's the problem here? Why do we uh, why do we like trail stops? Well, there are two types of uh, risk to your books. OK, there is what's termed capital risk where you enter a position, it drops in value. And ultimately, the more it drops, the more risk you have exposed yourself to. Uh, and whereas profit risk is you have a habit of giving too much back to the market than you need to. Uh, and this is when the market trades in your own direction. Now, people don't seem to care as much about this, but they should. Uh, because really, what you're saying is, if I have something that is worth $10,000, it's okay to sell it. Uh, and I bought it for $7,000. It's actually okay to sell it for $8,000. Uh, because that means I've made a $1,000 profit. Even if it's worth $10,000 today, uh, I'm quite happy. Um, to uh, give back a couple of thousand of that just to say I've made a profit. Does that sound logical? Does that sound, and often, and just to stress this even further, often what we give back to the market from its high of, a, of the lifetime of a trade is well in excess of what we'll give, um, what we'll give back to them, what we'll give to the market should we uh, have a stop that is triggered. Uh, again, just to put it into context, is something that is really worth looking at <laughs> yeah perhaps a little bit <laughs> um so profit risk is managing profit risk is um is good so we can do this um through various means we can do this through um potentially uh So we potentially having profit targets, which we've covered uh, ad infinitum previously. Or we can uh, do as it goes in our desired direction and hasn't quite hit our take profit yet. We will move our original stop loss up. So we're locking in profit as we go. And there's various ways we can do this. Um, so the bottom line challenges are is A, you don't use a trail stop. B, you, you've got one, but you don't follow it. And C, you use one, but you don't measure it or test it against anything else or any other alternative. Uh, we will nail this, Michael. I absolutely, it's my mission over the next two months to really nail the EA give back. We've had a really good test. And that's what you need. You need the market to stretch your models to the nth degree. So you know whether they have the longevity uh, and, the, and the ability to cope with uh, multiple market conditions. So that is my mission. 
because many of these, particularly in this sort of market where we've got hyper volatility, um, is uh, is an environment which it really tests that um, tests that as a concept. Anyway, back to the plot. If you're not using one, is it time to take the trail stop challenge? Now, the trail stop challenge is that you look at your last 10 trades, um, try the easy one, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, try the easy route and see what would have happened if. Uh, and then compare your results with the what would have happened if versus um, the... Um, yeah, with, with what you actually got. Uh, and so what I want, that's what I, exactly what I want you to do. If you're new to looking at um, trail stops, look at that. Do it. Well, you've lost nothing by doing it apart from you're investing a little bit of time. As long as you've got an idea about why you got out in the first place, um, and ideally a journal, uh, just re so just record uh, the exit and then look at the easy, the exit price and your profit loss and just see what would have happened if. Um, so there you go. Um, so look, there's no doubt that trail stops assist in locking in profit, but there's a there's a few challenges, a few things to think about. First of all, do you place it on your platform or, or not on your platform? Um, what works one trail stop method might work really well for one asset class, but not the other. There's a solution to that, which we'll talk about along the way. Uh, and the bottom line is, if you don't measure what you're doing, you don't know what works or what works best. So Really, if you really want to solve this, you need to have something in place that measures your trading. Obviously, with an EA, it's slightly different because you've got uh, a backtest facility. Uh, you can even backtest your live trading over the same period with a different strategy to see what would have happened if with that. Um, but those are the three uh, underpinning things which you've got to make decisions about. The People wouldn't put it on a platform sometimes because of the feeling that uh, there are stop loss hunters on markets who will find areas where people will trail stops to and trigger it. Whereas if you don't have it on the system, nobody can see it. Uh, but then of course, you've got to have the discipline of actually following through on that. Okay, so the easy one really is the price EMA cross. Okay, so using the EMA uh, as a trail, uh, so if we were to do this and we were to do this on, let's say, the, let's bring this right up. If we were to use the, so we've got two EMAs on here, we've got a 10 and a 20. And you can see here that if we use the 20 and use the close beneath that, then we'd still be in. In fact, we might get triggered on the 10. Uh, but really what we're looking for is a break of that. So if we look at this potential short trade on this reversal, let's say we got in somewhere sort of around here-ish, and then we use the 10 EMA as a stop, uh, then we would be out we're looking for a close of that, and then we'll be out on this candle here. That would have been a nice trade. Uh, so that's a really easy one to try because you know what your entry was, you know what exit was. In fact, if you use an MT5, you can, um, you can you'll see the trade. Uh, and you'll be really easy and uh, be really easy to see. Um, so, and now, so you've got a couple of debates here, of course, uh, which moving average do you use? Uh, generally speaking, um, if we use the, the 100 plus EAs that we've developed and, and the back test results, um, anything less than a 20 seems to be too tight. Uh, and in many cases, it's a 30. And there are two ways of addressing this. You can either do it on a touch. Uh, so any of these, and that means that any time during this candle, if it touches the 20 EMA, so it would have been triggered here, and here, and here, and here, and here, because it's touched the MA sometime in that candle, or you can operate it on close, uh, which in now, none of those cases, it would have been triggered, would still be in this trade uh, going up. So would have managed this period of where it just sort of flatlined for a little bit or traded within a tight range fairly well. So a touch or a close beneath is a decision as well as the which EMA do I use. Um, so you adjust that after every candle. Um, so if you're doing this, 
uh, so what we'll do is say right okay we're looking for a so let's say we're using this let's say we're going in on this candle so we're looking for a uh, there's our 20 EMA this candle will turn it to there this candle will be there this candle will be there this candle will be there so on and so forth oh, unfortunately of course you've got to do a touch if you're using the system uh, to do this so you, that's one of the reasons you might pop this to something like a 30 uh, and it still would have been triggered you'd need something like a 50 or a 60 for it not to be triggered anyway have a play with that Put back on a 25 so you can only use a if you want to put something on your system what are we in now there we go okay so if we wanted now to put in a stop loss here these are eas but you can once an eas on there you can still adjust it i'll I'm going to modify this okay i'm going to lock in uh we opened at 36088 it's now at 36385 which is outrageous um so we're gonna put a stop at 36 315 okay there we go uh, so that now is trailed uh, essentially to the tune of around about 250 points a rather remarkable recovery in the nikkei i did say that that was uh that had changed dramatically throughout the course of the day way off its lows um and there you can see there you can see the trade entry okay so now what we've done if we put this if we look at the trade levels you can see we've locked in uh so this was our entry it didn't have a stop on the it does have a stop on the ea and it does have a trail but essentially what we've done is we've trailed it up to the in using the uh, emas here you would have done that fairly you would have been okay with either of those emas and still been in this trade and that's why we are still there but it's not showing it on the system because it works out on every candle so it doesn't do what i've just done there but if you're going to use a touch you've got to have that on there it's maybe a bit tight for um so whatever happens now we've locked in 111 profit now there is there isn't a again there isn't a take profit that you can see here there probably is one somewhere within this ea but it deliberately doesn't put it on the system because it's a dynamic take profit which is another story for another day but that's how you would trail a stop you want it to trail it you trail it up you trail it up you trail it up as the price goes up you can even uh, get it to do that uh, and this is we use our um, we use our ma so you can see that is what we've done with this we've trailed our stop loss up to where the uh to where the uh, 10 ema is sitting right now and i'll be quite happy that if that went off so that's a 10 ema is using now as a trail uh, when we talk about variable um variable stops um various variable trails on wednesday we're going to talk about uh, a system which allows you to move from a 20 to a 10 because you can see the big gap now between here we'll be given all of it back all of that 300 dollars back uh, if we continued using the 20 uh, but now what we've done is we've used we're now using the uh we're now using the shorter moving average on that um, as our trail so we've we've tightened the trail up and made it variable because we've done so well and now the gap is too big to give all of that away hope that makes sense so by doing that what we've done is we've achieved our objective of giving less back if our stop is hit so that's an ma cross now as i said uh which ma you can use a simple you can exponential is usually preferred because it um tracks the market slightly uh slightly closer because of its weighting what period as i said anything less than a 20 to start with is likely to get triggered through noise but a five on a on a daily chart can often be okay uh, and then as i said is it a is it a closed price Force of the MA, so I has to close beneath that. In which case, you've got to do it manually, or is it an anytime touch? Uh, and as I said, does this stay the same throughout the trade? Uh, we're going to talk about that in more detail next time we meet on Wednesday. Um, so, as I said, if you're using a closed price, then you can't place it on the system. Now, there is a risk, of course, of a catastrophic candle. There is a risk that we get a candle like this okay then give the way um if we put this on an hourly chart for example uh if you were on a touch you're gonna lose on that it dropped 
uh, 870 points in one candle okay in one candle drop 870 points so two candles obviously because this is a 30 minute chart it still dropped the same amount but over two candles now if we'd have been using if we'd have gone along and using a close price uh, or uh, beneath the close of let's say you wouldn't be going along on this anyway but now you might so let's say we're using the 25 ma as this as the trail if we did it on on close price we wouldn't be out of it until this point so we would have given away essentially even though it's better on an ongoing basis essentially giving away 454 pips okay so what a lot of people would do is if they are using on close and they're going to review after every candle is they would uh is they would have a safety net stop in just in case there's that catastrophic candle so if you're using it on close you might say right okay i'm gonna put the system trail at this point here um just to uh uh, just to make sure that there is, if there is candle, we, we we don't give away the full 480, whatever it was, pips. We give away a couple of hundred, but that's part of the game. Does that make sense? So a safety net stop is worth considering. Uh, and often, if you use other, uh, other trail stop methods, you may well choose to have a safety net stop in as well, which is based on a an, uh, price EMA cross touch um levels are really important uh obviously levels are if it's break if it breaks this line it's gone the number of different alternatives we can use retracement levels um by that let's look at another pair um if we look at here then what we'll be doing here if we're still in this long trade here remember the definition of a trend is is a, a higher low uh, and a higher high if it's an uptrend. Okay, so in this case, um, we've got this, then we've got this. So this is still an uptrend. Uh, now we've got a lower high. Okay, so if we get a lower low, uh, so there was the last low. So if we get a breach of that low, then we're out of there. Okay, so we use the last retracement level. It's interesting. Um, if we use the last retracement level to, um, Here's an interesting stop or an interesting trail. Just file this, you guys, later. Somebody can post in Discord. Uh, if you get a lower high, we need to define how many times it's or what determines this. Is it a fractal that sits there? If we get a lower high, is that not an automatic exit? Um, it should be a really, really radical exit. Uh, that is the low in one, two, three, four bars. But that does that by the nature of a trend saying it's higher highs and higher lows and uh, we've now breached that with a lower high or is this just, just going to end up in a range anyway if you're using the levels retracement levels you look for the last one you you trail it up to there at this point um that looks a chunk of stuff in if you're trading maya for example the last retracement was here uh, so you'd be using that as your trail in fact you might even decide now uh to trail this up uh, to that point there um as that's retraced again uh, so that's the nature of a retracement uh, other things you can use is multiples of risk so you could so or say right okay if it drops one atr or two atr uh, two atr will be common uh so if it drops two atr from current price then i'm out of there so every time it move essentially what you're doing is every time you move every time it goes up 50 points then you're moving the stop 50 points um now you can actually do this on the system um through the automatic trail that's available if you're not, um, if you're not familiar with that there was a youtube video i did on that ages ago how about how to do that somewhere you can run i will hunt that out uh, so if you want to know how to place a system trail stop um, when you go to sleep, and if you're not, if you're using discretionary approach, that automates the trail during those sleeping hours. 
Uh, key levels such as support resistance uh, pivots are, are a good uh, yardstick if you're trading um, smaller time frames. So if we look here, uh, let's do this on an hourly chart to take off some of the noise. Uh, so if we look here now, that's actually not a bad chart. GB pound Canadian dollar might get a bit choppy in here. But what we can do now is we can say, right, OK, it's actually looks as though it's going to close beneath uh, this S1 pivot. So what we're going to do is we're going to trail it to underneath that pivot, meaning that if it comes back up here, then we've locked it in and banked it baby, essentially. Uh, and of course, um, the, again, with that, you've got a close versus touch. So is it an anytime touch of where you place it or is it a close above that pivot level or below if you go in the other direction? Key thing about this is, is be consistent. You can't test the system properly if you're doing one thing one minute and another thing the next. Um, and use something that takes into account the price and the volatility of the instrument. It's why I don't use pips uh, as a uh, as a trail or as anything, really. Um, simply because if you look... If we look at the uh, if we look at the GB pound yen, which is probably looking quite sweet actually at the moment. If we look at the GB pound yen, and we look at what a half percent move would be from its current price. It would be ninety five points, ninety five pips. Sorry. Okay, if we look at the ATR on this time frame, currently it's 55 points, is one ATR. So if you're trailing, um, if you're trailing this, this actually looks like quite a nice trade to the upside if it breaches 188. Um, So one ATR on this, essentially on an hourly chart, a GB pound yen, actually, let's make it a 30 minute chart. So it's 28. Oh no, let's keep it hourly. Let's make it obvious. Okay, so at the moment it's 55 ATR. Now, if we look at a Euro Aussie, ATR currently on this is 19. So if we were to have a 55 pip, trail then that will be 180 on the gb pound yen and would be almost 380 on the euro aussie because of its price and because of how its volatility now we can make it even more radical and say right okay if our standard stop is 55 pips uh Kiwi's not had a very good day at the office, but you can see even despite that, it's 13 pips on an hourly chart is the average candle movement. So what we're saying here is if we use our 55 pips, that essentially is over 480R. So that's a nonsense. If you use pips, it's a nonsense, okay? Because it doesn't take into account the stun volatility, uh, particularly when you look at Forex, correlated you know, pairs versus non-correlated pairs. So using something like the ATR, which takes into account the pricing structure and the normal movement of the FX pair is logical. Uh, yeah, Tom, you can. I, I will hunt out that. If you're popping in on Wednesday, I will hunt out that video and show you how to do it uh, because you can use it. Uh, and what that does, so it does it on a point basis. So if we wanted to... We're not in this at the moment, are we? I'll, I'll show you without showing you, if you know what I mean. Uh, so if we wanted to put a trail on the Aussie yen, and so all we do is right click, uh, trail stop, uh, do a custom. Um, so let's say we wanted to do it. Now you've got to remember we're working in points, not pips here. So you've got to add another zero, if you like. So if we wanted to shift it up, if we found our ATR here is 13, 
and we wanted to trail it up every time we did 280R, uh, then that would be 26, put an extra zero on. Uh, so that would be our trail stop, click on OK. And then every time it moves up 13, sorry, every time it moves at 26 points, it would move our trail up uh, 26 points. Um, so that's how you would do that, if that makes sense. Um, so remind me if I don't, I will find it beforehand and I'll make a note of it. I'll put it in some dock or something. Um, but remind me on Wednesday um, to uh, to do that. You can see the yen's pulled back fairly significantly. Oh, sorry, the Nikkei is pulled back fairly significantly already. By about 100. But the the yen cross is doing okay. Uh, right. Back to the plot. So that's levels so you can use if you really like fibs you can use fib same same idea of support and resistance of pivots so you would decide okay it's it's past the next resistance so it's through the next pivot or it's through the next fib level let's trail our stop up to um again be consistent 0.3 atr below the you know below the level you've identified something of that nature uh the third is matt d signal um so it's a usually action on close price uh, but what we would do here uh let's say we were to use this uh actually let's use the yeah let's use this so say let's say we're short here um just bring it up a little bit so let's say we're going short on this candle here a little bit of a trend continuation to the downside that would have been a very nice trade over a number of days um and let's see we didn't have a take profit in for some reason what we can do is we can pop a macd on uh let's do 10 and 20 we've just been consistent and so what we can do is we can look at the signal line and the rule of the thumb is if the signal line drops beneath the histograms what it means is those moving averages are getting tighter uh and this is a moving average of how tight the move of how of this moving average movement uh and so momentum is decreasing on that candle there nearly did it there but but remained underneath it but you can see the gap there so we'll be out on this candle here well, let's say we're, we were long uh here then what we'll do is we would be let's say we're going along here then we're looking for a the signal line going over uh the top of the macd so in this case that was on that candle there uh so which would have been the same as using the 20 ema essentially in, in this case uh let's have a look for another example uh so let's say we're going short here on the bottom of what looks like a, a little double top thing going on uh so if we use our 20 ema let's say we got in on this candle and we'll be out on this candle here so we'd have made 89 pips if we were to use our MACD signal line, it actually crossed beneath on that candle there. Uh, so it would be out at this level here. Uh, hence, we would make 102. So it would be around about 16 pips better off by using that MACD method. But essentially, what you're doing is you're trailing, but you're using, uh, you're using the, essentially the, this, this divergence which the macd measures you're using this divergence and convergence to say this is over and it's over to an extent whereby the, the moving average of the gap between this is now uh, it's now lower than, um, uh, it's now lower than the average so let's just get out of it so that's quite a nice trail uh, again something that you can have a look at your last five trades and say well would it made a difference you won't find it it is the same all the time sometimes it'll be better sometimes it'll be worse but generally speaking i think that's quite solid the only thing is that it's not it, again you need a manual way of doing that you need to manually check after every candle uh, and it just is to ask the question is it below or is it not and again you've got to have the discipline to follow through on it like everything we talked about uh challenges what in macd settings i would generally say that if you're using a 10 and a 20 to stand and moving averages on you chart main chart area then you should mirror that with your macd the standard is obviously 12 and 26. um there's no platform stop there so again you could use a safety net stop idea so you may well have 
uh, with this. Uh, so let's say that this is your initial stop here. Remember, this was our entry on this candle here. So as that moves down, so you might say, right, OK, uh, what I'm going to do is since this move has been more than 380R, I don't want to give all that back. So we're going to move our stop, which is the pink line, uh, to this level here to make sure that we don't lose, essentially. And then we could even sort of do it on every retracement. So every time we get it, and there we go, we could take it to there. So this is our worst scenario there. Another little retracement there. So we could sort of say, right, OK, uh, we're taking it down to there now. So what you're doing is you're locking in a bit of a safety net just in case it does that catastrophic candle to do something like this, uh, for example. If you'd left your stop somewhere down here, uh, that would have been taken out. Boom, one candle. See you later. Um, and that's this is a great example of why close is often better than touch because that would have touched multiple uh, MAs irrespective of what they were um, if you were short. But there are certain circumstances where a touch might be good. And when we talk about variable, uh, again, when we talk about variable moving averages, I think in session three, we're going to talk about that to some degree. Uh, so as I said, Probably in terms of MACD settings choice, it makes sense to be consistent with what you're using uh, potentially for entry on your main chart area. Uh, now, worthwhile talking about a little bit because it is quite popular and is peddled by a fair few educators is this concept of partial close. Some people do well, some people do, don't do it not so well. Um, but usually that's not combined with a trail. It's essentially a way of just taking some money off the table to reduce risk generally so you're not given as much back. So often what you'll see is people say, right, OK, we're going to take X amount at this level towards the percentage move towards our take profit. So a 50 percent profit of our potential profit, I where we've got our take pay profit level, uh, then we're going to take off half the trade. And that half the trade should cover our stop level. So it is now a low, a, a no-lose trade, is what they tell you. However, if you stand the chance of making $10, this is no dollars, this is $5, okay? Minus $5, okay? So if at 50%, this is the thinking. So if at 50%, so I at five dollars to the positive side. What you do is you. Uh, so this is the price. Let me just do it in a different color. So I'm trying to explain this as clear as uh, clearly as I can. So if at five dollars price, what you do is you minus fifty percent of your lot size. Okay. So what that does is essentially covers the stop. So it means the worst scenario is now this, theoretically, and the best scenario is now this, minus the $5 you've already taken off. Okay. So does that make sense? So yes, if it does. So if you're half the way to your take profit, you take off half of it, that covers your stop. So your worst scenario is you don't lose anything in terms of what you originally invested. Uh, the best scenario is you make your original take profit minus what you've taken off the table. Uh, so that's what people are taught. Uh, now, there's two things with that, of course. First of all, of course, it might not get up to $10. It might well drop to here. Now, people say, it's okay, I haven't lost. Well, you actually have lost because at this stage, you were $5 profit. At this stage, you could have been $10 profit. So you have actually lost. That's profit risk from your net worth. From your net worth, if if at this point here, you had $5 profit, that was your net worth in this position, plus whatever you paid for it, of course. At this point, your net worth is diddly squat plus what you paid for it. So that's the thing, okay? And of course, because you've still left this here, you still, your stop is still down here. You've not moved your stop at all. However, if we just do a little tweak to this, okay? So we've got original take profit, $10 to the upside. There is our break even. And there is our 
stop loss okay and let's say we still want to interact with this trade at five dollars so when it hits five dollars we want to do something to remove some money off the table why would we want to use that profit to cover this okay because here's the other alternative is you at five dollars you take five dollars off and you trail your stop you don't leave your stop down here you trail your stop to here okay so your worst scenario is now five dollars profit okay because you've locked that in the bit that's left can't get down here so you're not covering that stop now you're covering down because you know why would you want to double your risk here that's ten dollars risk to the downside it was only five dollars to start with and then you've still got the option to make another five dollars here does that make sense so why would you use this to cover this when you can trail it all up to zero so that's what i would say is a good way to partially close so by all means partially close uh but don't leave your original stop where it was trail that up to just above break even and that means you're not only in a no lose situation but you're in a, you know your worst scenario is 50 percent of your potential profit you'd use the other you don't move your stop and your worst scenario is zero percent profit So you're trailing along with your partial close. The only thing that that achieves, apart from making it a no loss trade, of, in nominally, of course, it is a loss trade because you've lost five dollars. The other thing is, it, it's no better. In fact, it's worse. I mean, I'll show you one more thing. It's worse than just trailing the whole shooting matchup. So if you're at five dollars, and minus five is your stop. If you trail everything up to zero, okay, when it hits five dollars, we don't partially close at all, we keep the position and we trail everything up to zero, so it's a no loss trade, okay. Uh, but because we haven't partially closed, our maximum win is still ten dollars. So, in terms of scenarios, best scenario is trail is partial close and trail. Second scenario is don't bother about a partial close at all and just trail the whole position up. And third best is partial close and leave your stop where it was that's good that's good money uh money risk management of profit the only benefit is the psychological one oh it's okay i can't it is a no lose trade now uh because we like the concept of a no lose trade even if we are losing five dollars on that no lose trade so there's that psychological comfort of covering your stop that's it there's no numerical advantage of doing it unless you trail along with your partial close so there are, if you're looking at this, and again, it's something you can test, if you are using this already and you're not moving your original stop, then why not have a look at it? Why not say, well, what would have happened if I'd done my partial close, I locked in that little bit of profit, and then I'd trailed my stop up to break even? What would have that, what would the result of that been versus what I'm doing now? If you're using a different trail, if you're using a different, if you're not partially closing, then of course the test is, what would have happened if I had closed half it out at 50% towards my original take, uh, take profit? So what's really, really important from this is a couple of things. First of all, you need to get exact and specific. As we've talked about, every time we talk about a trading plan, we talk about getting exact and specific about what the situation is that would lead you to trail in some way, shape or form. And then the second thing, of course, is be absolutely specific not only on your trigger but what you're going to do when that trigger is hit now just before we shift on just and call it a day for tonight and you can go away and do some work on this just to sort of uh if you like frame the next session for wednesday is the concept of variable trials now before i move on to that the other thing i want to say is there's no reason why you can't have multiple uh trail systems in inverted covers working together uh, the idea being uh, whichever is triggered first is the one that you use um so you could have a partial close thing going on with a, a price ma cross uh, going on and you could even uh, so there's no reason uh there's no reason why you can't have both those going on at the same time and maybe even a something that says if there's a uh if it's a, a lower high then i'm out here as well so there's no reason why you can't have those three systems run together and whichever triggered first is 
that again, as long as it, as long as that's part of your plan, as long as you're consistent, and don't say, oh well, yeah, look, I see my price MA is uh, is triggered, but it hasn't done my trail stop thing. That's still active. It could still, uh, sorry, my partial close thing. So I might as well leave it and just see if that one's triggered anyway. So those are the games your mind will play with you. So essentially, you're saying I'm having multiple ways of locking in profit, but whichever is triggered is first is actioned. Now, when we start to look at variable trail variable trails, this is based on the concept that different market conditions produce different profit risks. So we've already covered a good example of that is already this this concept of of do I trail my MA price on a uh, move on a close price below my MA, or is it an anytime touch of the MA? So that's an example of what I mean um, in terms of varying it. But is do you sort of start to do that based on when market events are coming up? What's the underlying volatility of the market and the velocity of the move? Um, so um, if we look at so this looks as though it's tipped. So it's breached that. Remember, we talked about uh, we talked about reaching a level, a retracement level. Well, there's your retracement level here, and it's now breached that on this candle in terms of close price. So that's been a really strong move to the upside. So uh, as I said, if we were going to use a 20 EMA, we're miles off this, miles off this now, even if we entered down here. So be giving away all of that profit, all of it, every last little cent uh, based on this trade, if we waited for this 20 EMA to be, to, so is there a point which we say right now we're at a 10 EMA? What is that point? So that is what we're going to talk about in the next session. Uh, so the velocity of the move will increase the distance between the MA and price. It may be that increased volatility means, uh, what do I mean by increased volatility? Well, you just have to look at what the GB pound on a daily chart is doing at this stage. This is volatility. This is the ATR on the GB pound daily. Uh, so we're at pandemic levels almost. Actually, when was that? Not quite pandemic levels. We are on the USDN. But if we look at the last time was this volatility was uh what's that september oh sorry october 2022 the last time markets are this volatile on this particular pair so does that determine uh, how we trail in some way shape or fashion that's going to be the topic of session three but the concept of variable trail in alter do we tighten our stop just before a Wednesday's CPI, US CPI number on any USD properties or on gold, which is obviously linked fairly significantly to the uh, USD. So, so yeah, we're going to look at all of that, and uh, and therefore, um, our set trail variable um, is on a defined technical either directly or indirectly, and by indirectly, I mean, well, look, something's happening to the to the index maybe that says, or to the VIX maybe that says, maybe we should alter our um, our trail stops on the NASDAQ, um, or something is happening to USD, so we alter our trails on, on gold. Um, that's what I mean by indirect. Uh, but, the rules of the game are the same if you're going to use any variable trail and again we're going to talk about these considerations when we meet on wednesday what is that market or technical event trigger switch um what types of trail are going to be impacted on that you may choose to do that you may choose to subsequently change parameters on the trigger so so that should have been on the uh on your system so you might say right i'm moving from a 25 ema to a 10 ema or you might say that I'm moving from a an hourly chart to a 15-minute chart. Or you might say um, I'm now using a touch of an MA rather than a close beneath an MA. So we're going to talk about all of those things on Wednesday. So take it to the next level. But what I want you to do in the meantime is, is have a look at what you're doing. A, make sure you're consistent. Make sure it's well articulated. Make sure it's, con uh, it's tradable consistent, 
consistently by having it uh, specific and unambiguous. And of course, make sure you're doing it. Um, that's level one. Level two is what we're going to talk about on Wednesday, which is, well, what other things can I put in to reduce to reduce that impact of or reduce that amount that I'm giving back? Should there be a big any market move? Uh, and what would the conditions be? And then we'll get into the uh, get into the next level stuff a week on Wednesday. As long as they work together, not against each other. Well, I, I think that there's a general acceptance is that you've got to make a decision about do all have to be if you have two or three uh, together do um do you have to have all of them trigger before you're out or just one of them trigger before you're out i uh, do this but move stop loss to break even peter that's spot on i'm guessing that's uh, referring back to uh, your uh, the partial close i think that's good practice peter uh, what i would do is move why 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 move it to break even why not move that to just above break even maybe half an atr uh, what we found with a partial close on the on the EAs is that uh, the sweet spot sweet spot seems to be somewhere between um, one and one and a half ATR above entry is where you trail to because uh, that gives you another little bite uh, of a profit cherry as well. Um, so have a look at that. Just have a look at some of the trades you've taken and see what that would have done. Um, it does mean, of course, that if it starts to drift downwards, you triggered earlier. Um, so you don't want it too close, but just set yourself a parameter uh, and, and see what that would have done. Um, that's what I would suggest. But uh, good call that you're doing that already. Good work, mate. So I hope that's enough. There's lots for you to digest there tonight. Some of it, uh, for many of you, is going to be revision. Uh, for some of you, it's going to be new either way. I hope it has given you some things to think about. And as I said, frames the next session uh, well. Uh, making sure that we've got all, if you like, all the foundation stuff in place before we move to next level. So your actions, um, look, if you're not using the trail stop currently, uh, take the trail stop challenge, just stick a 20, 20 EMA or 25 EMA, use a close price beneath that and see what would have happened compared to what you actually got. Uh, and then plant your flag in one approach. Articulate how you're going to action it specifically and unambiguously in your plan uh, and have a go at some of the others. Uh, then once you've done one, if you're already using trail stops, um, compare one against the other. So have a look at that at MACD exit, for example. Have a look at using levels and e even retracement levels to your um, to the latest highest low. If you're in uh, if you're in a long trade and lowest high, if you're in a, a short trade, and then of course commit to following through. It that's really what trading is all about, and commit to continue to work on finding what is your groove in terms of your particular systems etc anyway that's enough for me banging on for tonight i hope that's a bit useful you're so welcome sonia thank you all oh thanks very much michael really appreciate it uh cheers david thanks paul um you guys take care of yourself i will see you ea guys tomorrow i'll see the rest they'll be back if you can make it along to wednesday session uh it'd be wonderful to see you there well we'll take the next the next steps with trail stops take care of yourself Bye-bye for now. Trade safe and see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.